Yo, what's going on guys? Chase the Bro here, and welcome back to another Dark Souls 3 DLC Weapon Showcase. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my thorough analysis of the Demon Scar, as well as optimal build stats, and any strategies that you can use to make this weapon a little bit more OP. Not that this weapon needs any more advantages, it's already crazy as it is. When I first started using it, I couldn't believe it was a weapon that scaled so well with faith and intellect while allowing you to cast your pyromancies. They created the perfect pyromancy weapon. There is nothing you could use as a pyromancer that would beat this weapon. It's perfect. So if you have a build that's centered around pyromancies, use this. Also, the weapon itself is a curved sword, so its moveset is very fast. Now, it may not be super damaging. I think on average, per R1, I do 200 damage, which isn't amazing or anything. But the potential for combos with this build is pretty unlimited. I'm sure by this point you've seen me use the 2R1 strike, Black Serpent to Chaos Bed Vestige combo. It's not a true combo, but it does catch people a lot of the time when they try to roll away from the Black Serpent. And if you do land it like I do a ton in this video, it does incredible damage. The versatility of this weapon just amazes me. The fact that you can cast Pyromancies at any moment makes your playstyle so different. Like I learned so much just using this build. And because this weapon is so overpowered, I was trying to think of a weapon that could actually counter it, and I couldn't come up with anything. This weapon does really well in close combat because it is a curved sword so you're going to get your light attack off before any other weapon does. And when facing weapons that have long range like spears, you have your pyromancies to cover that so I can't think of a way that any other weapon would put you at a disadvantage. My first thought was weapons with hyper armor but all you have to do is just not walk into them as they're doing their attacks and you can use their pyromancies at that point as your main offense so you have such versatility it's just amazing you're never at a disadvantage. Although it was weird for me at first to fight with a weapon like this because I'm so used to having a heavy attack and the heavy attack on the demon scar is how you initiate the pyromancies. But once I had trained enough of the demon scar I got used to the fact that my R2 was how I casted my pyromancies and that's when the search for my combos came in. And I think I came up with a pretty interesting one don't you guys? And it definitely is a pretty beast combo when it lands but you could also just use the black serpent to chaos bed vestiges because the black serpent staggers them long enough for you to cast the vestiges and it'll hit all the time. Just mixing it up and using your attacks from the demon scar with your pyromancies is going to confuse your opponent as it is because they have no way of predicting what pyromancy you're going to put out next. I also forgot to mention that the weapon art on this thing is pretty overpowered. It's a like that of a regular curve sword so you do a spinning combo attack but at the end of it, you leave a pool of lava on the ground, kind of like the Chaos Orb. So if your opponent is really good at spacing and is trying to wait for their opportune moment to attack you, and they wait till the end of that combo, they're going to step into the lava and get injured regardless. And when you manage to land the whole combo, it does a pretty decent amount of damage. I mean, 567 for just the combo is pretty good. And then you can finish them off with whatever pyromancy you see fit. Now I'd also like to add that you guys can use whatever pyromancies you want with this build, but I definitely recommend having the Black Serpent and Chaos Bed Vestige, because it almost is a true combo. There's rare times where the person I'm fighting gets out of it. It doesn't happen very often, most of the time it lands, so I'm going to recommend those two in your spell category. As well, I had a lot of attunement for this build, just so I can try out a whole bunch of different pyromancies. You don't need to have 5 spots like I do. You can have less attunement and put more health into your build, or whatever you'd like. And speaking of build layouts, I'm going to take you on over to my equipment and stat layout. That way I can explain some of the optimal stat layouts for this build and you can check out what I've been using. Alright, so let's start with the stat layout. So it is a pyromancy build, so you're going to want 40 intelligence and 40 faith because that is the soft cap and your damage returns per point after that get to be 1 or 2 and it's not really worth it. Also, you're going to want to make sure you have 16 dexterity because that is the minimum requirement for the demon scar. Sadly, I really wish there was no minimum dex requirement. And after that I evenly distributed my stat points amongst Vigor, Attunement, and Endurance. Keep in mind that I'm also wearing the Prisoner's Chain, so my Endurance is only 30, my Vigor is only 31, and my Vitality is really only 8. And like I said earlier, there are a few different ways to make this build, so you don't need as much Attunement as I do. Like honestly, I wasn't using the Boulder Heave as much as I thought I would, so I would probably make my Attunement 24 to be optimal, because I don't need that much mana. And having the Black Serpent and Chaos Bed Vestiges is really the only spells you need. But if you are someone who enjoys switching it up and having a whole bunch of different Pyromancies and trying them all out, then I definitely recommend having 30 Attunement. But if you are going to take the less Pyromancy route, then I would say use those points toward your Vigor. That way you are a little bit less squishy as a Pyromancer. You want to have a good amount of Absorption just in case you do trade or get hit. Health is kind of your lifeline. 
But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for the stat layout. So I'm going to bring you on over to the equipment now. Of course, I'm using the Demon Scar plus 5 because you want your weapon to be fully upgraded in PvP. Right, guys? But yeah, it does scale the best off Intellect and Faith, like I said. It barely scales off Dexterity. You don't want to waste any of your points in that. The damage return for your points is pretty pathetic. And as you can see, the Demon Scar only does fire damage. So it's not split damage, it's just one type of damage. And I also keep a simple Casus on me, like most of my builds if you've seen them, guys, because it slowly rebuilds my mana. And it's a good parrying device to find fighting someone who's just spamming. Not that you need to rebuild your mana with this build. I don't feel like you'll go through 30 attunement, but it's just nice to have on you. I am wearing the Ring Knight set with the Firelink Helm because I love the way it looks, and it has good damage absorption. I'm wearing the Great Swamp Ring and the Witch's Ring because they both boost your Pyromancy and they stack together. I'm wearing the Sage Ring Plus 2 because it shortens the cast time for all your Pyromancies, which is definitely necessary. And finally, I'm wearing the Prisoner's Chain because it boosts your Vigor, Endurance, and Vitality. And it used to take a lot of your damage absorption away, but now it barely does. So it's definitely worth wearing. You get free 15 levels for 3 less damage absorption. That's so good. And that's pretty much it for my build, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video because this weapon is amazing. If you haven't tried it out, I definitely recommend trying it. It's one of my favorite weapons from the new DLC. If you enjoyed the video, then please like it. It helps my channel out a lot. And if you're new here and not subscribed, subscribe for some more Dark Souls 3 content, bro. It's coming. As always, thank you guys for watching. Chase the bro out.